I'm guessing you are here this morning because you had mentors like that too. You had people who nurtured you through the arts, whether at home, at school, or out in your community. And Comparis Arts is here because we believe the same. Students take part in the arts, family days, community grants, and our own programming throughout the county are designed to be that inspiration. In August of 2020, when we were realizing that COVID was with us for a much longer duration than any of us had ever anticipated, Americans for the Arts wrote, in the best of times, the arts create connection, belonging, community, and joy. In the worst of times, arts create all of that and more. Most of all, the arts create hope. Let's spread hope together. Kannapolis and Mount Pleasant, Concord, Harrisburg, and Midland, we are Cabarrus Arts. Thank you. They say a man doesn't learn to write so he can write well. They say a man learns to write so he can write his way out of hell. Well, the same could be said for artists being one myself. All artists are compelled to transform beauty as a form of hope because if you can turn tragedy into tapestry, pain into painted masterpiece, then life is indeed worth living. When I was 16, I wrote every single day my poems came as feverish as a field of violent violets, all fighting over themselves to bloom. And at night, I painted till I couldn't see straight, only to pass out at my easel like an altar. Y'all, I painted like my life depended on it. Because it did. Because grief had twisted me around trauma till I could not tell the difference between myself and a lost cause. But art, y'all, art was my safe place a creative space where only I could go. So even as a teen, I knew I wanted to use the arts as a tool to help other teens like me speak their truth. Because no one seemed to think we needed therapy, only punishment. You see, y'all, we were the bad students. Not knowing that behind the scenes, I had tried to take my own life, black myself out into my own starry night, once rage and despair consumed me after my father died. The unfortunate thing about healing is if you don't know how to express what you're feeling, you can't even get started. If you don't know how to process trauma, sift through emotions, then it's really hard not to end up a product of your environment. So maybe a man doesn't learn to write so he can write his way out of hell. Maybe a man learns to write so he can heal himself. Rewrite the narrative. And that is exactly what the arts do. They grant access to what's going on inside of us and what we can do. Y'all, I'm 37 years old today and I teach personal development through the arts in lockdown facilities, shelters, and schools. And every single week I see the proof that the arts make a difference. They save lives and bridge the difference between cultures. I've seen the transformation in my students. I've seen paint smooth over the canyon of creases that circumstance has ripped through them. How each stroke on a canvas helps them process what's been done and climb one line at a time to freedom. I've seen poetry grant more forgiveness and revenge than any bullet could blast. I've seen them write themselves out of trauma and dare to dream for a better tomorrow. I've seen a girl refuse to accept any kind word from an adult, damned herself ugly, then painted herself beautiful enough times to finally believe it. You see, in order to understand what an opportunity is, you've got to believe you're worthy of receiving it. And when all you've ever been told is how much you don't deserve a chance to grow up, it is not enough to have the opportunity if you don't know what to do with it. That's why it is vital that the arts be a part of our school systems. Y'all, last week I asked a group of juvenile detention teens what a resource was, and they couldn't even define it. When a classroom or a home has turned into a third world war zone, it is easy to forget our freedoms, our endless possibilities. But I believe that the arts show us probabilities I believe that the arts save lives, that our work is a field with enough nutrients for a harvest of light because I've seen it plant in my students the seed of pride. When my students see their artwork hung in a gallery for the first time, they literally weep 
There is a hope that floods through their eyes once they recognize what a city, a resource, an opportunity can do to prove that fairy tale endings do exist, that someone out there sees the beauty reflected in them. Y'all, when you leave here today, please do not forget that every single one of us is a gallery worth walking through, and we all have a mark to make to be the living proof that the arts matter far beyond statistics. They are radically changing the lives of real individuals. I know because I'm one of them. I wouldn't be here alive with you today if it didn't. Thank you. I was honored to host one of our Music Mondays. The music filled the depths of my soul. My heart filled to the point that tears streamed down my face. Once I was able to collect myself, it was then I noticed something. Our nothing can stop me teammates were stopping. They were lingering. They were pausing. They were slowly climbing the stairs and stopping long enough to grab one more note to take with them. And then those who were leaving, they strolled to the exit. It wasn't, that, it wasn't that mad dash. Some even stopped to hear the end of a song or more. Cabarrus Art Council, you provided those healing moments of pause we needed. Your music brought sunshine to us in the darkness and moments of celebration in times of despair. Through the healing power of music in those pauses, you provided an element of healing and care that our teammates needed to be able to continue providing the best care for those who needed it the most. I am here to say to you, thank you. Bryson, like he just said. And I'm Ian. And Ian has been my theater teacher all throughout high school. And to talk a little bit about the experience of having Ian as a teacher, I just want to say that he has just been such an outstanding role model and such like a light on a journey that can be really traumatic for some people. And having you as a teacher has just been one of the biggest blessings that I could ever ask for. Thank you. Um, it's funny that you use the word light because if there's one word that I would use to describe Bryson, it's luminous. Uh, he is absolutely, uh, he is a light. He is a guiding light to his peers uh, who see that with drive, uh, anything is possible that you can achieve at the national level. Uh, he is a light in that he has a burning drive, this desire to continue to participate in the arts. It pushes him forward. and. Uh, he also shines on stage. He is absolutely luminous on the stage. And you guys are going to get a sample of that now as he sings Out There from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Every day they shout and scold and know about their lives. Keep the soft, the gift it is to be them. If I were in their skin, I treasure every instant out there strolling by the cell. 
haste a morning out there like ordinary men who freely walk about there just one day and then I swear I'll be content with my share won't resent won't despair old and bent I won't care I'll have spare 